this week's Pilch Point with Abram Pilch is proudly powered by Pure VPN. When you're browsing online, you uh, you definitely want to uh, protect your identity, whether it be from Google and Facebook or from your ISP, especially if uh, the FBI is going to be able to to requisition your browsing history without a warrant. Um, and the best way to do that is with a VPN like Pure VPN. Um, you can obfuscate your browsing. You can report that you're somewhere else, and and uh, all of that can be done for three dollars and thirty three cents a month if you sign up for two years. And to get that deal, and to find out about the thirty day uh, money back guarantee, you can go to pilchpoint.live/purevpn. All right, Avram, it is my favorite type of pilch point. You've got a show and tell for me. Yes, but I know since we also have this on audio only, I will try to tell uh, everything that I show. So uh, this past week, uh, we had NVIDIA's uh, GTC, Graphics Technology Conference. Obviously, nobody was able to go to it in person, but they did have Keynote. And they and NVIDIA announced some things. And one of the things they announced I've got right here that I got to play with, which is the NVIDIA Jetson NX developer board. Now, let's take a step back. What is the what is NVIDIA Jetson and what is NVIDIA Jetson Xavier NX? I'm sorry, Xavier NX uh, board in the first place. So NVIDIA Jetson is NVIDIA's uh, AI, uh, AI board technology. Uh, companies are using it for all kinds of things, building robot, building industrial robots, things like that. Uh, they run off of uh, NVIDIA's uh, Tegra processors. Um, and uh, last fall, uh, Xavier NX, their latest uh, generation, was announced, although it's only started shipping uh, just now. And Xavier NX has 384 uh, CUDA cores, which is a lot of, allows it to do uh, 21. Um, was it T, uh, 21 trillion operations a second? Um, and that allows it to do all kinds of cool machine learning things. Now, they announced the little board, but it was just a little board that was like the size of a, of a sodium that is a piece of RAM that you put in your, your laptop. Well, that has no way for you to attach a keyboard or a mouse or a monitor. Uh, so they've come out with the developer board version which for three ninety nine gives you the Xavier NX board, NX chip uh, plugged into a developer board that has lots of USB ports. Uh, it has an M two slot for NVMe. You can add an NVMe uh, SSD to it, although it boots off of a micro SD card. Uh, and even though at three ninety nine it's no Raspberry Pi competitor, uh, it actually has a forty pin GPIO. A set of pins that you can attach Raspberry Pi accessories to, and it has two uh, camera CSI camera ports, uh, which you can attach Raspberry Pi camera modules to. Uh, so let's have a look at it and what and a demo it is running. And unfortunately, because I have but one uh, webcam, I've got to take it off here and show it to you. So over here. Oh, sorry, my desk is a mess, but it's a relevant mess of Raspberry Pi stuff. Um, anyway, so over here, uh, you see the, the Jetson Xavier NX developer board. You can see the GPIO pins over here. You can see the HDMI port uh, that I have uh, plugged in. I've got a couple of, I've got a mouse and a keyboard plugged in, but there's four uh, USB ports. Uh, on the bottom, I won't turn this over for fear of unplugging it. Uh, that's where you put the NVMe SSD, uh, and and uh, it has Wi-Fi. Unlike the uh, Jetson Nano kit that came out last year, that was ninety nine dollars, that I might have demonstrated on the show and complained about because it had no Wi-Fi. So over here we've got. Sorry, I'll hold my hand steadier. Uh, over here we've got the screen, and this runs a version of Ubuntu called Tegra for Linux. And I'm going to show you a demo that it runs. And over here you can see that um, 
what we've got here is four different AI applications running at once that a robot might real might really need. So one is um, in the in this corner over here, you see it's detecting people. That's important because if you had, let's say, a hospitality robot, uh, you would it would want to know, oh, is this a person that's walking by me, or is it a dog, or is it a rolling cart? Um, sure. Over here, we have a po we have it analyzing poses of people. Um, all these, of course, are are video. This these the applications are really running, but they're using footage that Nvidia provided. However, I have tested at least the pose one with a with a live webcam, uh, and it works. Um, so it can tell how the person sort of where they're facing and moving. And then in the other corner over here with uh, the you'll see that her eyes turn, have green boxes on it shows a face with and it shows when the person is actually staring their gaze detects their gaze when they're staring at the camera and then uh, this other corner over here is natural language which means you'd have to put headphones on you can ask it questions and it gives you answers based on a set of text that you supply now uh, the answer is only as robust as the text that you supply so I wrote like a paragraph about Tom's Hardware, and I said Tom's Hardware was founded in 1996. When I ask it what what year was Tom's Hardware founded, it says 1996. When I ask it how old is Tom's Hardware, it still says 1996. So it doesn't do any type of you know higher level thinking to figure out that 1996 was 24 years ago. Okay. Uh, so why would you? Why do you care? Why would anybody care about it having these four applications running? Well, if you were running a, a robot, which this is made to work for, you would, and let's say it were, I think this is really good demo of, say, for a hospitality robot, um, you would want, put this back so to stop making people dizzy by looking at it, um, you would want your robot to talk to someone if the robot, if the person approached and looked at the robot. Unlike, say, Alexa or Google Assistant, where you accidentally set them off, you would want the robot to say, oh, this person is next to me, but they're looking at their friend, so no, don't talk to them. Mm. But, oh, this person is looking at me, so I guess I'm going to initiate a conversation with them. Um, so that's an example of why detecting that it's a person, detecting how they're standing, and detecting whether they're looking at you uh, would matter. Um, obviously... There are other things that you can do with this. You can do object detection. You can do object recognition. What type of object is it? So, but the board is powerful enough to do that. Uh, so that's pretty impressive. Um, and it it all runs on Linux. You can use the Jetson uh, SDK, which has a lot of different built-in models. A model is sort of how a machine knows about something, like what knows what human eyes look like. Uh, that's a pre-trained model. So they have a lot of pre-trained models that you can use. You can program it in Python or other languages. Uh, and so there's a lot of flexibility here. Now, it is not a hobbyist thing. I mean, it could be, but it's expensive for a hobbyist device, right? You, you're not going to spend $399 to do a fun project, I mean, unless you just got a lot of money rolling around. Uh, you're going to buy this because you're part of a large, larger company and you're buying a slew of these boards and you need a developer kit to learn how to use, to, to learn how to and prototype and make uh, something before you roll out your lineup of robots for the factory. Um, but it's still fun to see what's for all of us what's possible um i tried you know going through some of their tutorials and i have to admit it kind of hurt my brain a little bit um so i need to get a little better at this before i can really sort of take advantage of what this can do um but i think the idea here is that with uh this type of processing power that it has uh for something fair, really small, because remember, if you were building robots, you wouldn't be using the developer kit that I showed you. You'd just be using the little thing with the fan on top of it uh, that uh, that I was pointing to. That's that's the actual board, and then you would attach it to whatever uh, you know I/O board that you created that your robot needs, which might be really small. So, 
That's just a quick look at the Xavier NX developer kit, which you can buy from NVIDIA for $399. Uh, and we have a, full, uh, a detailed article about it on tomshardware.com right now. All right, I'm going to ask... I'm going to ask a couple of weird detail questions that you may or may not have answers to. Uh, how many skeletal points does that uh, bottom left have? I think I counted 24. Mm -hmm. Well, um, good question. I only, <laughs> let me, I mean, they didn't say okay. in the, uh, in any of the materials that I got. I, I, uh, I counted 24 while you were holding the webcam one, up to it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, that seems about right. Okay. Yeah. That okay. seems about right. So that's it's about got, that's about the same number of skeletal points as the second generation Connect, uh, which is awesome considering it's not it's not requiring you know all of the things that the Connect was right all, with all the the infrared dot grid and all that stuff. It's able to do a similar. Yeah, it'll do it off of a two D camera. Yeah. So. So my webcam that I'm talking to you on right now, and I would demonstrate it, but I'd have to unplug it from here. Uh, and we all know that web, I, don't, I can't get a second webcam for a while because we all know that webcams right now are the hand sanitizer of the tech world. Um, Although there the, is, that, there is that, that company that just, uh, that just announced a new line of them. Really? Yeah. Oh, you got to tell me. Uh, 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 Karen Thomas Thompson. Uh, Thomas? Yeah. Anyway, she put out an email this week. <laughs> mm, I got it. I got it. All right. I don't think I got that. I, you got to tell me about this after. So anyway, <laughs> yeah. So I tried it. Point being, I tried it with my webcam, although my office space is such that I couldn't really walk far back enough to like get it, it to capture my whole body. Uh, as, uh, But it, it, it did a good job of capturing like my arms and my torso, okay. um, you know, and showing, showing skeletal, skeletal points on it. And it now, didn't. It didn't. Did it? It didn't panic on a partial skeleton. No. Ah, see, the Connect totally panics on a partial skeleton. Oh, you mean if it doesn't see your whole body? No, uh -huh. no, it's fine. It, it was fine. If you just saw my face, it gave my face. It outlined my face. Okay. If I rolled further back and I held up my arms and it saw my arms and fingers, it, sh it got those. Um, if I put a second person in the in the frame, uh, it also got them. So it. So it, it did that, and I think, oh, one th key thing to keep in mind is this is all happening locally. So the this is what you would call edge computing, which means, which is short for it's not on the internet. <laughs> it's, not, it's not using the internet. Like, that's a really fancy term that a lot of, uh, for those who are not familiar, uh, the fancy, every, every time somebody comes up with a new, uh, that tries to sell an old concept as new, they come up with a new term for it. So now, doing something on your computer where you where you are is called the edge, uh, instead of just on my computer or on the computer. Te uh, Technically, edge is a little more than that, but yes, it, and it's been around I mean, a long time. It could, be, I mean, it could be close to where you are, as opposed to not. Directly on your computer, like it could be on your local network instead of in the cloud. It's not in the cloud, right? Right. That's what we're trying to say. Right. Like it's not. These things are much easier to do if they're in the cloud. If you're, you sure. know, push to any, push to Intel or uh, or Azure's machine learning systems, you can do this stuff super easy. But do you want all of that for something like a like a robot? Probably not. It would be nice to be able to keep all that, all that private because you've got video. You've got. You don't want to become Clearview AI. Yeah. Well, also, you know, connectivity is not always perfect, sure. right? You could, you could use, you could demo this at CES, which you couldn't do if it was cloud based. Because, right, right. That's so. So, so there. So there you have it. I mean, you can do. That's awesome. It. it it does a lot. Uh, it does a lot locally. Uh, I mean, it does it all locally. So that's. Uh, I mean, although you probably, for like training a major AI model to like figure it, so it knows what a person looks like or whatever, mm -hmm. you you may want to use a more powerful computer for that and then download the model to this. But you can. Sure. I mean, you can use it to create models. I just haven't really. I'm not really an expert on that. So. 
I, I went with what they gave me, but sure. um, but there's a lot uh, there's a lot that one could do. Very cool. I've I've already got ideas. Obviously, I already have ideas. I'm I am rebuilding a product that we did for a client in my head using this instead of the Connect, which is why I focused on that that uh, skeletal mapping because that's what the product was based on. <laughs> yeah, that model's already built in, so that's I, like. That would be if you if you figure out what you wanted to do with the date with that information, mm -hmm. you could very easily make it happen. I have literally already messaged Mark to let him know about this thing, because uh, <laughs> maybe we can bring the project back under our new company. Anyway, uh, super cool. You've already got content out there. Yes, uh, TomSoftware.com. We have an article about the Xavier NX developer developer kit. Very cool. Well, I think I'm going to end up having to. To grab one of these for myself, even though I know it's it's uh, expensive, but uh, it sounds like the kind of thing that I am going to be super excited about. So, as always, thank you, not just for our audience, but for me personally, super excited. And as always, I look forward to what we talk about next.